Yeah, black hole news. We love black holes, don't we, Brady? So we're now seen behind one. That's the cool thing about this, this latest result. Uh, we've actually looked behind a black hole, which is something you wouldn't think you could normally do, right? Because black holes suck everything in, don't they? So that's what we hear. So how could you actually see, see behind one? There's a team from Stanford University. They've been looking at light echoes from a particular black hole. Uh, it's a black hole in a galaxy called Vicky One. I think it's 800 million light years away. It always blows my mind in, astro in astronomy, right? And uh, when you're dealing with black holes, these are A, they're supermassive black holes. So this has got a mass of uh, about 10 million times the mass of the sun, right? It's just dealing with that. It's a mere 800 million light years away. <laughs> okay, just, just. So they've been looking at this black hole at the, the center of this galaxy. And in particular, what, what they've been looking at are things called light echoes. Now, what is a light echo, which is, is, is the first thing you would ask? Well, you essentially see a light echo the moment you look in a mirror, right? I mean, we know what an echo is, right? If I do that, I could probably make an echo in here. Let's do a sound echo. Oh, did that work? Beer. Okay, so what's happening there, obviously, is the sound wave is bouncing off probably the roof or whatever, right, and coming back. And because sound doesn't travel very quickly, we can detect the difference. Okay, when you look in a mirror, you, you, the light's traveling so fast, it's, it's, it's as if everything's instantaneous, right? But of course, when you look at, at things on vast astronomical scales, then light echoes can be, can be important. You can see sort of, think light will bounce off and it can, there can be a significant time difference before you get this, the second signal. So it's essentially the same as, as the kind of echo we just had in this room, but with light. And they're really useful for astronomers because they, they allow them to sort of map out regions that they wouldn't otherwise, be, they can get 3D images of, of regions by looking at the light from the echo. So for example, there's a star called YLW16B, I think. 400 light years away, very young star, only about a million years old. So its planetary disk is still forming around it, and astronomers are trying to look at it, right? So they're using light echoes to sort of study this. Now, why light echoes? Why are they useful? Well, because you look at this star, it's sitting there in the middle, there's all these planets starting to form in and around it. You've got the light that comes straight from it. Well, that's fine, but that's not going to tell you much about the inner structure of what's going on, because you're just seeing one signal there and the light coming from it. But what you can detect. So you can imagine the light going away from you, bounce off all this sort of protoplanetary disk, and then you get the echo back. And you can start to probe the inner structure of an object like this, which is, which is what astronomers are doing. So what's going on at the black hole? So, so they're playing around with light echoes, right? They can map out the 3D structure, can get a bit of a more idea of what's really going on. These supermassive black holes, have, they're incredibly powerful, right? They're very massive. And so when, when gas is collapsing onto it, the gas heats up as it collapses onto it. You've got this, this disk of, of, of matter, it's, it's falling into the black hole, it's getting spun around, it's, it, it's a real sort of vortex of mayhem, right? Things are getting very energetic. It heats up so much that it actually becomes a plasma, so, so the, the electrons in the gas get stripped off because there's so much energy associated with it collapsing down onto the black hole. And so you now have this plasma. This plasma is a plasma of electrons, and so it can form a, a magnetic field as well. And so the, the, what's going on is the black hole, this supermassive black hole spinning like this. And you've got these magnetic fields being produced, and these magnetic fields go really high. So they go you know, all, all around the black hole, they're going up. And because the black hole's spinning and the magnetic fields are sort of binding into the, into the core of the black hole, they twist. They twist, they think of it like cosmic strings twist around and, and, and chop off. And these do the same, they twist and they can chop. So these magnetic fields are there, they, they, the magnetic fields are getting torn and twisted. Occasionally they can break and they can shoot these jets of electrons essentially, it forms this corona. And from there, they can produce you know, the electrons come shooting off this and they, the x-rays are coming out. So this is what the astronomers are looking at, looking at the x-rays being emitted by these, these, this corona. So this, so this light echo we're talking about today isn't actually an optical light echo. It's, it's an x-ray, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's actually, they're using the XMN satellite, which actually, in a previous life, I, I helped, helped build. Well, not help build, I helped test it. So what are those x-rays doing? Well, the coronas kind of, we don't really know too much about the shapes of coronas. There's still some debate about that, about whether they're big massive objects above the, you know, like almost like a lamppost type object above the black hole. So you've got the accretion disk going right around like that, and you maybe have this corona up like this. Some people say it's like that. Another idea is that it's more, it's a bit flatter, more of a sandwich shape. We don't really know. And that's actually one of the things that we're trying to use these light echoes to, to figure out. Anyway, whatever it's doing, it's, it's giving off these x-rays and they're bouncing off the, the accretion disk and we're detecting them. 
Like a stone skipping on a pond. Effectively, yeah. You're there. I'm here. <laughs> okay. You're the observer. Yeah, I guess you've got your telescope. So some of the X-rays come bouncing down off the accretion disk of the, of the black hole and come straight to you. X-ray comes down, bang, hits the accretion disk, we detect it. Nothing fancy, but that's interesting. You can get lots of cool physics from that. You can, for example, detect whether the corona is changing in size. And for some stellar, black, stellar mass black holes, we've seen that. Um, but it's, everything's happening in front of the black hole, if you like. But others come this way. Now, they should just go away, right? They shouldn't do it. There's no way they should sort of come back this way. You think it's going to bounce off the, off the accretion disk? It's going to go off at, over there, right? Except... They see the flashes of this slot that have come straight to you. But what they've also seen is a, a, a small time delay later, they see another set of lower amplitude flashes at a different color. And those, they said, is corresponding to the, these flashes that are the, are the X-rays that have come down and bounced off the accretionist at the back of the black hole here. It's getting dragged around the black hole through, this, it's through how strong the gravity is. The space has been warped around here such that they, these can have a trajectory which allows them to come back round to you. So that's how they're seen behind the black hole. General relativity predicts that you should have this, that the space-time can get warped sufficiently that with a spinning black hole. A geodesic, it's called, or a trajectory of a particle will be one that can come back round. And that's the first time this has been seen. That's what they're particularly excited about. They're really able to probe the structure, not just in front of the black hole, but also behind it. So those X-rays are hitting the back of the accretion disk, from our perspective, being pulled back towards the black hole, but not into the black hole. They're kind of slingshotting around the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, OK, so, 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 you, so you would expect that, OK, some stuff's just going to fall back into the black hole. You're not going to see that, obviously, unless you're suicidally jumping in yourself. There is a chance that some of it will get dragged around, and that's what they've, they've detected. Anything that goes into the black hole can't get out. So it's, it's, sort of, it's, it's from the accretion disk, it goes all the way around the black hole, it's, it's on the other side of it, and then comes around. And so you're getting information about the back of the black hole, but um, in a rather unusual way. What's that vindication of? Well, I th see, I, 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 I think it's telling you that, 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 that general relativity looks like it's correct. At that, but, but that wasn't in doubt. That, it wasn't in doubt, but it's nice to have yet another kind of list of things that you can test GR with. It's not very easy to test general relativity in very strong gravitational fields. There are not many places in our universe where we can actually go and do that. This is one of them, you know, the, a black hole. And so it's a test of strong gravity general relativity. And, and so it's seen, you know, by, as a, a vindication. And I was read, I read the paper, it's, it's a bit too technical for me. I, did, I don't, didn't understand, you know, the observations that they were really making. And I do get the impression there's a lot of modeling goes on. I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you model the, the, the photons that, that, and the electrons coming in and bouncing off and coming back round? But they say they're modeling, which is in the context of general relativity. So they're solving general relativity equations with these trajectories in them, these particles in them. So that it's consistent with their model. Um, whether or not it's it's sort of verifying G GR and nothing else can 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 mimic it, I, I doubt that. I doubt. I, I imagine that you can mimic it with other things, but the fact that GR is working so well still in this environment, and the, the fact that you're, they're seeing this unusual trajectory coming from the back, incredible observations. I mean, incredible interpretation. The the the, the raw numbers are just staggering. I, they always blow me away. Eight hundred million light years. I mean. So that light was emitted 800 million years ago. <laughs> and uh, Crazy. that's what they're seeing. You, know, you think, go back to Eddington when he, saw the he measured the bending of light around the sun with the, with the transit of Venus. And this is now what we're talking about now. We're now talking about X-ray that's, being bound, that's coming, going off the wrong side of a black hole and being dragged back around. And we're detecting those now. Just think how far we've come in, in like 102 years. But that doesn't do it, right? Because that would actually make the, the two ends go the same way. Hmm. And so even if it was kind of doing different things at different times, you might end up with something S-shaped that way.